Good morning. Happy Friday. I have, yes, Neuro Coffee in hand and it is perfect. So, uh, busy day today. Started at 6 a.m. With, with calls. Got calls all day. Um, so I, I squeezed a gap in here early to, to get to talk to you because I did get a question that came in through, through email. Um, and, and this is a, a conversation that I'm having with, with actually uh, one of the people from one of the previous intensives as far as a clarification on some of the overcoming and yielding strategies. And so what I did is uh, I, I shot a little video that hopefully gives you a better representation of what we're talking about in, the, in that regard. Um, and as always, if it doesn't, then please ask more clarifying questions. So, um, so let's go ahead and let's, let's just go to that video and I'll talk you through it. So if you look at the video here, you'll see me playing with, with what, what looks like I'm giving way and then overcoming, and that's exactly what I'm doing, but I'm using the rope length as a representation of eccentric orientation. So if I shorten up the rope, then I go to concentric orientation, but I can still yield, I can still hold myself back, or I can put, pull myself forward as if I'm trying to pull the sled towards me in an overcoming strategy. So this gives you a little bit of a representation of, of what I mean by yielding and overcoming, because what people don't appreciate is the fact that I could be in a shortened position and I can yield because they think that the whole muscle is doing the same thing or both ends of the muscle are doing the same thing. And that's just not reality. And so uh, this final representation here is, is something that I want to make really, really clear because this comes into play when we're talking about the, uh, the pelvic diaphragm video that I did a while back. It's like, how can you be eccentric and yielding and move to concentric and yielding at max propulsion? And this is just a representation of that. And so you can see that I'm maintaining my yielding position or I'm creating an overcoming. So I move from eccentric yielding to concentric yielding or eccentric overcoming to concentric overcoming based on the length of the rope as a representation of the actual length of the overall muscle. So let's apply this concept to something very, very specific. So if I'm a right-handed baseball pitcher, so as I take the ball back to, to cock the ball and my left hand reaches towards home plate to pronate, so I am creating a concentric orientation at the shoulder of this left pec, so that internally rotates the shoulder. But to internally rotate the shoulder, I also have to have an up pump handle on that left side. So as I'm reaching towards home plate, I can concentrically orient, the distal part of the muscle that attaches to the humerus, but I'm going to yield at the sternum, which allows motion to occur. So my pump handle can come up, and that's what actually allows the shoulder to internally rotate. If I was concentrically oriented and overcoming in this left pec, I would have to substitute with scapular elevation instead of internal rotation. And this does happen to some pitchers, and this is one of the reasons why they'll lose velocities because they don't have this capability to concentrically orient a muscle and then produce a yielding strategy at one end or the other as needed. And so hopefully this representation gives you an idea of what we're talking about when we're talking about the overcoming and yielding strategies regardless of the orientation, whether we're eccentrically oriented at length or whether we're concentrically oriented, which is a shorter position relative to some other length. So if this uh, causes you any trouble or confusion, please continue to ask questions. I know these are difficult concepts to grasp, but this is much closer to our reality. Hopefully that's a little helpful for you today, and I'll see you guys later.